Hello and welcome. This is Bhaskar Napte from Pharma Growth Hub and today we are going to talk about helic column chemistry. So why one must use helic column over non-polar column or reverse phase column? What is the advantages of uh, helic chemistry? So as you know that the non-polar liquid chromatography is preferably used for retention of the polar compounds where the stationary phase is polar in the nature and the mobile phase is going to be a quite non-polar or hydrophobic in the nature. Now in this situation, in case if your compound is uh, polar, which may not be soluble into the non-polar mobile phase and that could be the one challenge for the normal phase chromatography. The another challenge for normal phase chromatography is its operation cost and the maintenance of the instrument. Now how one can design a stationary phase which actually help us in reducing the maintenance cost making it more cost effective and also able to sort out the challenge of solubility for the polar compounds and that's where the helix column chemistry comes into the play so helix stands for hydrophilic interaction liquid chromatography and it is introduced by Mr. Andrew Alpert in the 1990 and he has shown that how this stationary phase can be effectively used to separate the polar analytes. In the helix, the stationary phase is more hydrophilic than the mobile phase and this is just like the situation as of normal phase liquid chromatography. But the important difference is here now. The elution of the analyte decreases with the increase in the aqueous mobile phase such as water in case of water SN as the mobile phase. So in case of normal phase liquid chromatography, you must have seen the mobile phases containing the immiscible water solvents like uh, dichloromethane and hexane, ethyl acetate and hexane, chloroform and N-hexane. But in case of uh, helic column chemistry, I mean helic mode, you can actually use the water miscible organic solvent. You can actually use the water in the mobile phase, which is not really a trend in the normal phase liquid chromatography. So how is the retention of the analyte going to take place? Especially the analyte retention decreases with an increase in the aqueous mobile phase such as water. So in normal phase or in helic uh, mode, the stronger solvent is the water. Water is the most stronger solvent and then you can think about the uh, methanol, ACN, THF followed by dichloromethane, chloroform and then n -hexane at the end. So if you increase the aqueous mobile phase, means if you increase the quantity of water, I mean you are increasing the strong solvent that can result in the decrease in the retention time for your analyte. Similarly, the elution of the analyte increases with an increase in the less polar organic solvent present in the mobile phase. So in case if a mobile phase is water ACN, in that case the less polar or little non-polar organic solvent is going to be ACN. So if you increase the amount of ACN, that indicates that you are increasing the amount of poor solvent and the poor solvent is going to result into the increase in the retention time. So remember these two important points. Water is the strong solvent in case of helic and any organic solvent dependent on to dependent onto its polarity is going to become the weaker solvent in the mobile phase. So if you increase the amount of water you are going to decrease the retention time and if you increase the amount of uh, non-polar organic solvent like AC and methanol in that case, you are going to increase the retention time of your analyte. Helic uses water miscible organic mobile phases like water SN, water methanol, which is not really a possibility in case of uh, most of the normal phases mobile, uh, normal uh, phase liquid chromatography mobile phases. So helic is becoming increasingly popular for the separation of polar samples on polar columns but very importantly in aqueous organic mobile phases rich in organic solvent. So in helic mode, you can actually use the aqueous organic mobile phases like water ACN.
you can use the polar co polar columns and because of that your polar samples get retained for the longer time this is the biggest advantage of the helix uh, chromatography or the columns which we call as a helix now what are the stationary phases possible which can be called as a helix column silica gel i mean bare silica gel containing siloxane or silanol groups can act as a helix column and in case if you want to a chemically bonded stationary phases then the amino amido cyano carbamate diol polyol or zetyl ionic sulfa betaine ligands are used as the stationary phase for the helix and what is the strength of this polar interaction so you will have the very weak interaction with the cyanopropyl column then the diol can comes then the amino propyl and the silica is the strongest polar stationary phase in case of the helix mode let us talk about some of the stationary phases for helix and here is the first one that is non modified bare silica now this stationary phase has got silanol group as the active site and at a higher ph this silanol groups gets ionized develops the negative charge and can interact with the positively charged basic compounds with the help of cation exchange process the second example of helix column is the diol stationary phase now they are made up of high purity silica chemically bonded dihydroxy propane groups now these are the dihydroxy propane groups on the surface providing diol groups for interaction with the analyte and this stationary phase can certainly form the uh, hydrogen bond interaction with the analyte they demonstrate high polarity and hydrogen bonding properties the next stationary phase for helix is the cyanopropyl bonded phase so cyanopropyl silica lacks hydrogen bonding because it is the aprotic uh, functional group it doesn't have the hydrogen atom connected to the electron withdrawing group like nitrogen and therefore shows a very low retention in aqueous organic mobile phases for a polar compounds and hence it is not the a promising stationary phase for the helix separations the next stationary phase for helix is the amino propyl bonded so acidic compound shows increased affinities to amino propyl silica column because it is the basic in the nature the next stationary phase for helix is the amide bonded stationary phase now the amide group is usually bonded to the silica gel surface by a short alkyl spacer now this is the short alkyl spacer and this is the amide functional groups so what is the speciality of amide now compared to amines amides are very weak bases they are not as strong as like amine so the retention in case of the amide stationary phases is less dependent on to the ph the mixed mode stationary phase can be look like this having a bonding of different functional groups with the silica gel like phenyl like nitrile like amine and there could be a hydrocarbon chain as well to bring some of the hydrophobic interaction the next stationary phase for helix is the zetyl ionic sulfo betaine stationary phase now this stationary phase contain both strongly acidic sulfonic group and strongly basic quaternary ammonium groups separated by a short alkyl spacer so here is the strongly basic quaternary ammonium groups and here is the strong acidic sulfonic group now as there is only a very low net negative surface charge onto the bonded layer now why there will be very low net negative surface charge because this stationary phase contain both the charged groups like positively charged quaternary ammonium and negatively charged sulfonic groups and they are going to cancel out each other's effect and result into a very low net negative surface charge onto the bonded layer and hence the ion exchange interactions of the zetyl ionic stationary phase are assumed to be weak so this is all about the different types of helix stationary phases 
we also talk about the principles on which the helix works thank you so much